There are no aliens, no alien abductions, and no alien cattle mutilations, said the late William Cooper in 1999, author of Behold a Pale Horse. Now let's listen to what he had to say in 1999. I don't think there are any. At one time, I thought that there were simply based upon documents that I'd seen while I was attached to the intelligence briefing team, commander in chief of the Pacific Fleet. At that time, uh, and, and even for many years afterwards, I did not believe that the government would use me in that way. I had devoted my whole life to government service. I had been in the Air Force, I was in the Navy, I was a river patrol boat captain in Vietnam, I had. Uh, I had proved myself, I had combat ribbons with the V for Valor. Um, there was no doubt of my loyalty to my country, and maybe that's why it was so easy to use me, because I wouldn't doubt that what I saw was real. But over the years, I've done a lot of research, and what I've discovered is there's no proof existing anywhere that extraterrestrials are real, or that have ever visited this planet, uh, or that they exist anywhere in the universe. There is not one shred of evidence anywhere. There is lots of evidence, tons of it in fact, that there are a group of people collectively known as the Illuminati who want us to believe in some extraterrestrial threat from space so that they can cause a world government, you know, bringing together of all the people to resist that external threat. Uh, and uh, the first time that I saw any reference to that, I was reading some papers from the Carnegie Endowment Fund, and there was a record of a speech, um, well, it was a dinner for Viscount Ashii of the Japanese delegation, the Japanese Imperial delegation, in 1917. And John Dewey was, was one of the speakers. And the first sentence out of his mouth as I was reading this, I almost fell out of my chair because this was in 1917, and he said the best way to cause all the people of the world to come together in, in one world government and end war forever would be if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet. And boy, that just clicked with me, and I knew that, uh, that, that this is just another scam. This is the age of deception, there's no doubt about it. And then uh, eight times during Reagan's administration, he inserted almost the exact same phrase into eight of his speeches. And um, it's a scam. <laughs> that's, that's what I can tell you. What they call UFOs, these craft that fly around the sky, are real. But they're not piloted by some little green guy from some other planet. They're owned and operated by the United States of America for one, the Soviet Union for another, uh, probably Great Britain, Canada. I think the, uh, the first really operable ones were probably manufactured in Western Canada, in the wilderness, in a, in a, in a place especially built to, to create those machines, like we created uh, the Manhattan Project, uh, and, and the same kind of secrecy surrounded it. So the technology is real. It's been kept secret and it's been used to promote this concept that there's an alien threat to this earth. The cattle mutilations I've discovered in my research are nothing more than, than what's left after the government uh, does its secret tests on the, the low-level radiation leakage from its atomic weapons, assembly plants, and atomic power plants. It's a low-level radiation monitoring project. And if you look at what's missing in the cattle, you'll see that it's just as clear as day. They take the lips, they take the tongue, they take a six inch patch of skin, they core out the, the uh, rectum, the colon area, where those kinds of things would collect it. They would pass through the, um, through the uh, digestive system. On, on female cows, they take the, they take the udder uh, to check for low level radiation in milk. This is being passed to the, to the calves. And, and these are all grazing animals that graze on the grass that where the radiation falls when it falls from the air. And uh, it's just an incredible deception. 
And I'm just amazed that people have fallen for it in the manner that they have in the absence of any proof whatsoever. I mean, they cite hearsay as proof. Well, what about all of the alien abductions? They're not abductions. They're the results of a tremendously successful and very sophisticated mind control operation, all of which has been in development. Uh, well, they started working on those kinds of things since before World War II. But they have perfected them. On my website, I have a patent of a machine that can read your brainwaves, can recombine them in a computer and send them back to you and make you think things happened that never happened. I mean, you can't get a patent for something like that unless it really works. You have to prove it to the patent office. It works. The patent was issued. And this is just one of the things that snuck by them that has it. Because when people invent things like this, they're sucked up by the government immediately, and then they're, they're put behind the veil of national security and classified, and then nobody knows about them. But every once in a while, something sneaks by them. And when you do these searches in the patent office and trademark office and in the copyright office, you come up with some real gems once in a while. And that, that was one. Also, the congressional investigations into the, uh, the intelligence community has revealed the existence of these programs. And there's, there's no secret about it. It's documented. Project Artichoke, Project MK Ultra, uh, MK Naomi. You know, I could go on and on and on all day long, and, uh, you know, if you had the time in your movie, we could lay out all the documentation, which is official government documentation, and prove uh, beyond any shadow of a doubt that it's true. But that's what it is. It's not extraterrestrials coming down. The human body cannot pass through walls or roofs uh, or, or through windows that are closed. You know, this is all the product of the imagination. And, and people's willingness uh, to believe something because they want it to be true. I don't know why they would want it to be true. You see, because if, if it were true, these are not friendly aliens. They're doing some terrible things to people. If I were to kidnap somebody, pass them up through the roof, take them somewhere, perform operations on them, and uh, take samples of semen and and ova from their, you know, reproductive organs and, and uh, plant thoughts in their mind and, and all this kind of stuff and then bring them back. Guess where I'd be right now? In prison. It's kidnapping. It's criminal. It's a terrible thing. So uh, there, there's, a, uh, there's a morbid sense about all this too, is if people want to be hurt for some reason. I don't understand that. But that, that certainly is something that... Uh, that somebody needs to look at. Why do people feel that this needs to be real? What in them says, I want to be abducted and abused and kidnapped and, and raped and, and uh, all this stuff against my will? Because they seem to take uh, some kind of satisfaction that this is happening. And, and nobody's talking about the fact that this is a terrible thing to happen. If I were to do that to you, you wouldn't be too happy, would you? But somehow it's okay if an alien does it. I don't think so. It's all bullshit. It's a lie. And so, it's... so where do you feel the hope for America lies? Oh, this is William Coop. This is Norio Hayakawa in Albuquerque, New Mexico, USA.